Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third. You can find me as M to the Third on Instagram and here on YouTube as M to the Third Knitting Podcast. I also have a small business called M to the Third Yarn Co. where I sell naturally dyed yarns as well as products with my illustrations on them. Today we've got a lot a lot of stuff to show off. I'm doing an episode a little bit earlier than I would normally. I'm trying to get kind of like back into the swing of things. Um, yeah, and I was really excited to sit down and kind of share with share with you guys what I've been up to. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go over some socks and the, my M to the third sock stash along progress for the year. Um, I have some FOs to share with you. I have um, a little bit of a haul from a local fiber fest that I went to. I've got a bunch of whips. Um, definitely been feeling the cast on vibes as fall has really like settled in here in the Pacific Northwest. And um, yeah, it's just some updates, general life updates about Vlogmas and December coming up. And yeah, excited to, uh, to be here with you guys today. So first of all, I just like thank you so much to everyone for your comments on last week's or last month's video. Um, you know, it's a little, it's very scary being vulnerable on the internet to p the public, but um, I do know that I have a really great group of followers and y'all did not disappoint with your really kind messages, DMs, and just like, yeah, validation, which is exactly what I was hoping to accomplish by talking about um, my diabetes diagnosis. So just thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm just keeping on, keeping on and feeling a little less alone and just a little less scared about, you know, what it means. So yeah, that's the important part. Um, it also, so I'm talking to you on like October, I think 28th, 27th. And, um, so earlier this month, it was my birthday, um, and I turned 30. <laughs> so that's a big one. I had a really great party with a bunch of my local friends. Um, my best friend even ended up in town and we got to have dinner. And yeah, I just felt very loved and like special and that's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I had talked a couple years ago about planning a big trip to Iceland for my 30th and just ended up moving across the country and all this stuff. So that's like on the back burner, but I really hope I can make that happen and it'll be still part of a celebration of sort of entering a new decade of life. So yeah, I'm feeling really good. I'm stoked about being in my 30s. I, yeah, you know, it's a good time. <laughs> Let's start with FOs and then talk about whips and then talk about future plans and then talk about uh, the fiber festival that I went to. See, this is what happens when I don't like actually write out my list of what I'm talking about. You know, what can I say? So, um, the first FO that I want to talk about, uh, is part of the M to the third sock stash along 2022. Uh, so basically at the beginning of the year, I know you guys are probably so sick of hearing about this for the last like 10 months, but, um, I wrapped up all of the sock yarn that was in my stash and put it, uh, in a container, like a little basket and picked one every month. And then whatever I picked, I would knit into a pair of socks. That lasted for probably six months. After the six months, I was like, there are some skeins in here that I'm just not into. So I've been sort of picking up my sock stash, adding some stuff. Um, I got rid of some skeins that I just decided that I didn't want to knit. And so one of the things that I thought would be fun was to do a couple pairs of scrap socks. So I showed um, the in progress version or like I showed these in progress last month on the podcast um, and they are now finished and I've worn them a couple times. So these are my little scrap socks that I did. Oh, there's yeah they're shedding a little bit. Um, so what I would say the main color this like brown 
is just an undyed yak sock from a brand called A Playful Day. And then I incorporated bits of Orso Yarn Co's uh, BFL nylon, which is this lighter pink. This bright pink was a mini skein that I had of Perennial by Kelborn Woolens, which, to be honest, is probably not a great sock yarn. It's alpaca, merino, and nylon, but I really wanted to try it. I just love the colors, and they come in these little cute, like, almost like a little candy bowl of minis. Um, so I used that up, and then I also included some, like, random lightly speckled scraps here, and then also some Mondim from uh, Retrosaria. So yeah, I, I really like how they turned out. They're like mismatched but coordinating, and basically I just knit, and then when I got bored of what I was knitting, I just included another, <laughs> another color, and uh, yeah, so that's how these turned out. They totally vibe with my vibe. And uh, I really like them. So these were September socks. And then if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, which my handle is the same there, it's M to the third, um, you will have watched the progress of my October pair. So what I decided to do was pull out a bunch of skeins. Some of them were half skeins. Some of them were like the remnants of yarn. Some of them were mini skeins that were in my stash, right? It was just like this hodgepodge. I got myself a really beautiful set of 20-sided dye, and my plan was to knit a pair of socks following my sort of usual sock pattern, roll once to pick one of the 20 skeins that I had set out on my craft table, and then the second roll was for how many rows of that yarn I would knit. And so it was a really fun kind of saga. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm thinking I'm gonna upload all of those videos in one video on YouTube. Um, just cause I thought it was fun to watch, I kinda wanna preserve it. So if you're looking for that, hopefully I'll upload that before this video, you can check that out there. Um, and this is how those random socks turned out. <laughs> so, so fun. Um, I did roll the dice to pick which yarn would I would use um, for the heel and toes of both socks, just so that they had something in common. But they turned into more of a pair than I expected them to. Um, they definitely coordinate, they're definitely random, but they like have some of these like pops of fuchsia. Um, it was just so fun. So that's one. <laughs> I mean, they're so cool. And then this is the second one. Right? How fun is that? So yeah, it's bits and bobs of my naturally dyed yarn, um, random stuff that's been in my stash caked up that I just like didn't end up using for specific projects. Uh, I mean truly just like all over the spectrum, but they all like coordinated together. I sort of made sure there was like somewhat of a cohesive palette and I'm just really stoked with how these turned out and um, a bunch of other people are too so there's now a little hashtag and people are doing their own 20 sided or 12 sided dye socks and I'm going to be putting together some kits. Um, it's a longer work in progress because I'm making a little special something something to do to do them with but um, yeah I think that will that was a really fun like thing to do <laughs> and I enjoyed myself a lot. So, yeah, that, this will not be the end of my random knitting journey. Uh, we'll see where we end up in the future. Um, and that brings me to also uh, another way to support me is by joining the M to the Third Sticker Club. I send out um, a sticker a month along with a little letter and sometimes some other goodies. And this month, um, you guys skip, if you're part of the sticker club and you want it to be a surprise, skip ahead, like maybe a minute and a half. <laughs> um, but for this month's sticker club, I'm giving all of the sticker club members a 20-sided die. Um, so I thought that would be really fun. So those are shipping out momentarily. Um, but yeah, how fun is that? So yeah, that was a really fun project. I'm excited to kind of continue doing that in the future. And today 
I am wearing uh, the sweater that I finished for the last video, which is my um, Muscle Burr cardigan by Isolde Teague. I am also down below wearing some hand knit socks out of Patton's Croy. Uh, so I am nice and comfy cozy today to sit and enjoy the rain and talk to you about knitting. Yeah. Okay, last final object is kind of also, is also part of a knit along, but not that I have been hosting online. Um, so I work at a local yarn store here in Portland and we are hosting a shift along as kind of like the beginning of fall, getting into knitting season. So I had picked these beautiful skeins of Spin Cycle. I, so it sort of came together because I, like all my coworkers have a shift because we're like a big spin cycle stockist. And I was always like, I love how like there's so many colors in a shift cowl that like you can wear it with an outfit and it kind of like pulls a lot of things together and it like just gives it this great vibe. So I knew that I've been wanting to make one. I mentioned it to a coworker who was like, oh my God, we should do a knit along. And uh, no shade to Emily, but shade to Emily. She fully knit the whole thing before I even had a chance to like schedule a cast on date. And I was like, okay, Emily. I know she watches, so shade on you. <laughs> And so then we were like, she was like, well, then I'll knit another one. I didn't know you wanted to do it so bad. And then our other coworker, Tim, also was like, I want to knit one. And so then it like snowballed into this like store wide social media shift along, which was been really fun. We did an, a knit night cast on party and then they were giving me shade for casting on ahead of time. But like, I wanted to know what I was doing. I didn't want to be casting on and like following the directions line by line. So anyway, I cast on early, but I didn't finish it before everyone else even cast on. So watching you, Emily. <laughs> but so this is my shift. Bum, bum, bum. I, this is, this pattern is wild because it's so clever. I mean, I don't have to like talk about the shift. Everyone's talking about the shift. Um, it just like, I just had such a good time knitting it. I do really feel like it pulls together so many of my favorite colors and I can wear this accessory with like any of my outfits. So yeah, you just kind of wear it. Um, it's comfy cozy and it's a blast to knit. So if you want, and obviously you don't have to use spin cycle, uh, you can use scrap yarns, you can use like all sorts of stuff, but I, you know, spin cycle kind of makes it a special little project, especially if you haven't knit with it before. Um, so yeah, I had such a great time knitting that up and I've been wearing it a lot. It's really a perfect accessory for me. So yeah, maybe I'll leave that on. <laughs> kind of, yeah, every, I'm a little chaotic today, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, another FO. Um, and that is it for FOs, I believe. Yeah, so lots of sock knitting still happening. I've got two, um, two months left of socks and then I will have accomplished my goal of 12 socks over the course of 2022, which um, I'm stoked about. It's felt really nice. Um, it's been definitely eating into like sweater knitting time. I definitely noticed that. Um, so yeah, I'll be excited to kind of have a, a small break of knitting socks. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that I'm always knitting and it's so easy to like pick up one skein of yarn and be like, Ooh, this is sock yarn. Um, and sort of stash it. So, you know, just, I'll always be knitting socks, always be adding them to my wardrobe, and I I love that. So that's not going to change, but just maybe not at the pace that I accomplished them this year. <laughs> yeah, I have so many pairs of socks for Kay and I right now that I have been washing them in the bathtub. Like, that's like the only uh, place that is like enough room for me to actually feel like they're all getting clean at the same time. So yeah, sock, sock time. So next I wanted to talk about some works in progress. 
um, some of which you have seen before, some of which are new, um, and yeah, let's get into it. So the first one that you guys, I <laughs> should have finished this and sent it out already. Um, I showed it last time, but this is the sad progress on my niece's Halloween um, sweater. I know, Halloween is Monday, and I'll work on it tonight, maybe. I'll get it together, but it's sort of, I said it's sort of Halloween-y, sort of not, like, sort of just general fall, so it'll still get worn. I've just been, I've just been doing other stuff and haven't been knitting on this that much. I am at the point where I'm almost ready to start the ribbing, and then I just have to do the sleeve, so I, it's doable. I'll get it done. But yeah, so that's the progress on that little guy. And there's that. I don't have, I mean, I'll post the link down below to the pattern and stuff, but it's a very simple striped raglan for a bib. So yeah, but the other one that I want to talk about, I'm really excited about. So, okay, actually I'm a little too warm. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I work at a yarn store and so some some days I'm at the store and I'm just like, I want to cast something on. I'm like ready to cast something on. <laughs> and last Saturday was one of those days where I was like, Ugh, I'm going to go home and and cast something on because I don't have a sweater on the needles. I finished this and I've been so working on everything else. I did swatch for a sweater that didn't work out. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but this is what I cast on instead. So this is, hmm, I'm going to look up the name of it because I actually don't know the name. Okay, so this is the Rebel Rebel Cardigan by Libby Johnson. It was absolutely a case where I had the yarn and I was matching the yarn to a pattern, but I also had an idea for what I wanted the pattern to be. I have a ready-to-wear open orange cardigan that I really love um, but it's it's wearing thin I've had it for a long time and uh, recently this amazing yarn was discontinued just in the way that um, it the company sold I believe is what happened so elemental affects does not have this base anymore or I don't know. Actually, don't take my word on that. I'm not 100% sure uh, why they they were not making this anymore. But so here is this amazing Cormo yarn. They had it in both fingering and worsted. We carried the both of them at the store, and uh, we get a discount when things go on clearance. And I've been eyeing this stuff, but just been hesitating. And it was finally getting rid of it and I was like this one this orange so good um so this is the fingering weight it's a lot of yardage it is like yeah each skein is 550 yards so I have like 1600 yards of um of this fingering weight it's super light it's lovely there's like variation in the plies it's just a two ply I just I adore this yarn I've adored it for a long time and I'm so happy that I was able to get some before it's like gone. Um, so the way that this sweater is constructed is with this long uh, back because it's drop shoulder. So you cast on a bunch of stitches, you do some short rows, and then you just knit for like nine inches. And this is, yeah, the back that's going to go all across my shoulders and onto my basically down my arm for where the sleeve joins. So yeah, this has just been a pretty easy thing to pick up. And this is what I mean by the fact that, um, that like sock knitting has been cutting into my sweater knitting time. Because this is absolutely a project that I would just pick up and knit on like while watching TV because it's just a bunch of stock in it. It's also something I would take to knit night. Um, and sock knitting sort of occupies the same spot in knitting for me, where it's just like something that I don't have to think about a whole lot and can just work on 
uh, in the meantime. So yeah, that's kind of why. So this went to knit night with me. I've got quite a few inches already. Um, so yeah, I'm just working on this. I'm really excited for it to kind of replace the ready to wear um, cardigan in my in my wardrobe to have it be made with wool, have it be a little warmer and probably fit me better because that's why I make my own my own clothes. So yeah, I, I just totally was like, I'm going home and I'm casting this on and it's gonna be great and it kind of has been. So yeah, I'll just work on this. Um, but another thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that Christmas knitting is coming up. Now, if you do not do any Christmas knitting, I fully understand and respect that. Um, I th it's, it's, you know, like two months out of the year where I don't knit for myself and I knit for everybody else. And that's, you know, there's pros and cons <laughs> doing that. But I did, um, even, even though I am about to cast on a bunch of stuff for my family, um, I wanted to cast something for myself on to look forward to for once, once, uh, all that, once all of that is done, uh, once all of that knitting is done. Uh, yeah, so just working on this little, little sweater slowly but surely. I mean, it's going to take a while. It is fingering weight, but I've already made more progress than I, I thought I would. So yeah, I'm sure you'll see the end of this in the near future. Also like this orange with my shift cowl is also going to be really good, right? So all that wardrobe planning really pays off eventually. Oh, I also want to show you the stitch marker on this uh, from Kira. Let's see. Rock facts. <laughs> Thought it was the perfect autumnal uh, stitch marker. And as usual, Maria and I are matching. So that's to be expected. Okay, so the last whip... Is that the last whip that I have? Yeah. So I have one more whip, which is um, a baby blanket that I am designing a little pattern for. So we, if you've worked at a local yarn store or even just like kind of think about working at a yarn store for a second, you'll um, know that a lot of people come in asking for baby blanket yarn and a pattern. And you'd be surprised at how difficult that request can be. Um, whether it's based on what colors people want or how much money they want to spend, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to put together a pattern that we could use to be like, these are all the things you need. Like we have it already. Here's your pattern. Go for it. And we got this yarn in recently. I think it's a new yarn from Barocco called Wizard. It's color changing. There's like a lot of different colors and they're very like, they're a little classy as far as uh, like commercially made um, color change yarns go. So I really like it. It's like a chain yarn. Um, and it's super wash and you know, all those good things. So I was like, I want to pair it with like a neutral. So I chose, this is um, also Barocco. It's vintage chunky because they're both like chunky yarns. And um, this was the idea I had was to do this like slip stitch pattern on one side and then the other. So the color changes are really present on both sides, but they look a little bit different, but it should be interchangeable. There's an I cord along the side. So the edges look really neat. And it's like about a 32 by 32 blanket is the size that I'm going for. So that's what I've been working on. Of course, baby blankets are like the bane of knitters existence because they do take a long time to knit. 
Um, so I'm slowly working on that. Um, I'm happy with how it's coming out, and I hope that I can put out just a free pattern on Ravelry, um, and maybe also do like a little beginning knitting tutorial uh, to be able to knit it yourself here on YouTube, but it will be free, and uh, yeah, I'm excited, excited to just have that as something that people can reference, because I know I have like a couple baby, um, baby blanket patterns, but they're like in books or there's some stuff that I've collected over the years and it's nice to just like have something to reference to go to really quick. So yeah, that's all of the whips that I have at the moment. Um, I did want to talk about some plans that I have. Uh, so talking about not just knitting plans, but also Christmas knitting plans. So, uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about is this beautiful yarn. I have had this in my stash for a few years um, from when I went to Rhinebeck. It is Fox Hill Farm Moret wool. It's really light, beautiful. They call it fingering. And so this is what happened is that I listened to the label <laughs> of a farm yarn. It's just this beautiful beige. It's not stark white. It's like kind of brownie, tan cream. Like it's a very warm white. And there's a, I've tried doing several patterns <laughs> with this yarn. I really want like a cabled cardigan. Um, I have a lot of this. And so I always thought it would be perfect for that. It's lightweight. I started trying to fit it into a fingering weight pattern. Absolutely not. It's like way too puffy. Then I tried fitting it into a sport weight pattern and that also I've been having issues with. Um, and so I'm thinking that realistically this probably will knit up closer to a DK. So I'm back on the hunt for that DK weight pattern because I thought this um, sport would work. I found this great pattern and I started swatching and it's just like huge. It's like several stitches bigger. Like this would be the sleeve. Like look at that. It maybe maybe I'm not doing, but like it would just be pretty big. So so yeah. I'm going to my pl I sort of like I knit quite a bit of it and it's I couldn't get gauge even going down a couple needle sizes and I also just don't want to um lose how amazing the yarn is in a pattern like this so I I yeah I need to kind of go back to the drawing board and decide if I want to cast this on again at one smaller of a needle size but I think I'm already at I'm already at threes. I don't think I want to knit it on twos and like hurt my hands because cabling already can be kind of strenuous. So that pattern that I bought is sort of sitting in the back burner and um, I'll figure out what this is going to become at another time. I was really ready to cast on and get that going, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't, doesn't work out. Um, the other thing that I've been really thinking about is the Fest Vest by Amba O'Brien. And I've got these skeins of Wololo from Spin Cycle. I've got these and I've and I've got these skeins of Wololo in Spin Cycle from the store as well as this that I got um, from someone who traded me some stash yarn and I really want to make that happen, but it's just like, add it to the list. Don't you wish you had all day to knit? I do. So yeah, those are kind of the two sweater or like apparel objects that I've been wanting to do and just, it hasn't worked out. Um, but I'm hoping, I don't know. You know, there's a million, there's always time, but there's always new things coming up that feel more exciting. So I feel like I'm, 
I'm fairly good at following through with plans, but also fairly good at like letting go of plans that end up feeling unrealistic. So, so yeah, I've, I've really got to shift gears, even though all I want to do is knit for myself. Um, I've got to switch. Well, I, I don't have to do anything. I want to switch gears into my Christmas knitting. And um, I am going to be doing Vlogmas this year. I'm very excited about it. And so you'll watch that kind of journey of me knitting Christmas things um, happen over there on those videos. But um, I'm knitting socks for everyone, but I am using my friend Elba's sock tube cranking service. So hopefully I'll be able to knit or like basically give away more pairs of socks because I'm implementing her services. Um, so I'll keep you updated on that and like the process. And if you're curious as to how to turn sock tubes into uh, socks, then I'll probably be posting some tutorials about that as well. He over on YouTube as well as on um, TikTok. So that's kind of what I have. I have, let me grab the yarn. Okay, so this is the yarn I got from Nomadic Yarns, who is who is a Latina indie dyer. She does self-striping sock yarns. I've knit with her yarn a lot. Her color sense is just immaculate. So these are two Christmas skeins that she posted a while ago. And the colorway is the most wonderful time of the year. Is that right? Yeah, the most wonderful time of the year. This is like very much my Christmas vibe where there's like brights and fun colors. So they're like Christmassy, but not like if you wore them outside of the context of Christmas, it would be okay. And then I matched them with this skein of perennial. I'm really enjoying the colors of perennial lately. So it's this like great neon sea foam. So that'll be the heels, toes, and cuffs. Might need another one of these. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is a lot of yardage. Yeah, this is almost 500 yards. So shipping these out to Elba, I already paid, um, pay, like paid for the two tubes. One of them I'm gonna do a 72 stitch tube and the other one is 64. Um, basically, if you're like, a t size US women's 10 or just a men's size, I'll do the 72 stitch sock. And if not, then I'll do the 64 stitch. So yeah, hopefully I get a good amount of little socks out of, out of this. I always do the ankle socks for Christmas because most of my family lives in California. So um, I do get quite a lot. So that's one Christmas project. The other one is that my Yaya has this little shawl that I had actually knit for my aunt that she stole. Um, and she lost it at the Getty. So I am going to make her a shawl with some alpaca yarn we bought when we were together in um, San Diego uh, from a local alpaca farm. That's like, because the yarn that I had used initially had some alpaca in it. And it's just gonna be like a little shawlette that she can keep over her shoulders. And I am going to stitch a tag in it that says, if found, call, and putting her phone number. Because this woman has lost many a scarf and almost lost one that I let her borrow when she was visiting earlier this week. So, <laughs> they cannot be trusted. But it's with, it's pretty thick yarn and it's like a nice little shawl so I think it'll go well. So last but not least I'm knitting my sister a sweater actually in this yarn. Not this colorway but in this uh, color changing yarn. She just wants an, a long open front cardigan. This is chunky. I think it'll be a really good um, option for her. She's like a yoga teacher and you know to put something on. It'll basically be a coat for her because she does live in Southern California. So I'm excited about that. And I'm also knitting my cousin a hat, probably also giving her a pair of socks. And yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what my plans are. I really need to like write out a list and really see <clears throat> what I need to focus on. Because while that's happening, I also need to knit the last two pairs of socks for uh, this year. So gotta make kind of a schedule. Hopefully I can get it all done. I usually do. Or like, I'm this much late. 
So, yeah, that is what's happening in knitting world of me. <laughs> Um, I do very lastly want to talk about the Oregon Flock and Fiber Festival. So, uh, not last weekend, but the weekend before, me and my coworker Natalie, um, had a full day adventure going to off. Um, it's a really fun little festival and we found some gems, so I wanted to share those with you. Um, it's about an hour and some change south of Oregon. It's actually the same place where the Black Sheep Gathering happened. And uh, so we drove down there for Sunday. I thought I was going to be able to go Saturday and Sunday, but I ended up uh, being scheduled to work on Saturday. So we just went Sunday. And um, it was perfect, I think. Just the one day we walked through all the booths and then uh, drove home and waited in line for in and out for 45 minutes. It took us like an hour to fully get through the whole thing. There's a lot of beef in Oregon with Californians. Both Natalie and I are from California originally and we were just like for all of the shit that Oregonians give Californians they sure are waiting a long time for some in and out. <laughs> so we were fine. We just had our knitting. We were just like scooting forward and we got our burgers and they were of course delicious. I mean there was a line coming out of the actual door too. So the I don't necessarily think that waiting in the car was any faster than if we had parked and got out. It was wild, but delicious. And I, God, I love me some in and out So yeah, we had a great day. Uh, we saw our other coworker, Kristen. Um, and I found, like I said, some gems. So I want to share those with you. Um, the first thing that I got were four skeins of this um, Romney from Compass Rose Farms. It's just my favorite natural sheep color, this like great kind of gray. And I've been really wanting to make a shawl from Knits About Winter that has like strands of mohair um, like held double with a base yarn. I think this actually might be a little thick. It's pretty densely spun. Like it feels, it's going to drape really nicely, I think. Um, just it, it's not lofty. It's a little bit more rope-like than lofty. Like it's worsted spun pretty hardcore. Um, so I thought this would be great, even if it's not the same weight, like it's a shawl and I can just go for as long as I want and incorporate little bits and bobs of mohair that I have around. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing with this and uh, yeah, just to support a local farm. From that same booth, I also got a bullseye bat and it's all natural colors of the sheep, which I'm really excited about. So these are great because you can spin in an ombre. So you pull from the center and you can just spin and, uh, you know, it just sort of, sort of follows the, the change. I, I, at the beginning of the pandemic, I bought one of these from a vendor in New England and spun it and had a lot of fun spinning it. So I thought this was cool that it was natural colors and then I can knit like a hat that is like a gradient or socks that's a gradient but yeah I think that'll be a really fun addition to my spinning fiber collection not that I have been spinning recently but you know it's fine all the other stuff I have um, and then there was a little booth that had books and I found well Natalie actually first found this and I was like I need to get that um, it was seven bucks and it's basically a, um, 4-H knitting instruction packet of materials from Oregon State University. So they have all of these, <laughs> all of the, like, look how cute. And so inside they have all of these amazing illustrations 
that are basically teaching you how to knit or like giving you helpful tips about knitting. And one of my favorite parts are these big posters that I think were supposed to be put up in like schools or classrooms. So there's four of these visual knitting guides and one of the reasons that I really wanted them was because I thought they would be an excellent illustration, um, basically resource, so I could use these images to copy some of the knitting techniques, but also just the design on them is so, like, mid-century, and I thought they were super fun, so that was a good find. Um, whether I use them for decor or illustration, uh, what, I'm not, it's not resources, <laughs> reference, reference images. So yeah, that was a really fun find. And then last but certainly not least, um, I got a sweater quantity of this yarn called Along the Chehalis. So the Chehalis River is in Washington and uh, I, I was immediately drawn to the colors of this yarn. Um, they and they looked like little just like candies the way she had set them up was super nice um, it turns out that she owns a yarn store in Chehalis and the, she created this with a couple other women a woman mill owner a dyer and then herself it's 100% East Frisian wool which I have used in a pair of socks that I got from um, a dyer in New England. I've talked a lot about those socks. It's like the first and second pair that I knit for this year. And this is a DK weight and it's naturally colored wool and then it's over dyed. So this has just a very light amount of blue in it. And then there's like different saturations. I was very drawn. I'm never drawn to like blue, but there was something about this that I just really loved and so I got I think I got 12 skeins of this and then you know I was texting with my dad because Chehalis is like a word that I knew had significance because my dad grew up in Washington State um, and we came up here a few times but I it's kind of, it's been an interesting thing moving up to the Pacific Northwest where my dad was raised and grew up um, but he hasn't lived here for like 50 years and so you know it's it there's just like all of these like connections in a way that I never experienced living in California uh, and you know just like names will sort of ring a bell but I don't know what what the memory of them is I guess so I was like, hey dad, I got this yarn that's called Along the Chehalis and the colorways are all named after different um, river related things. So this one's called River Rock. And he was like, oh, that's where I was born. And I was like, what? So he was born in Chehalis. And so it, I don't know, it just felt like significant and cute. So I've got this and I just really love it. I can't wait to find the perfect thing to do with it and um, yeah I'm really excited about it and uh, she owns a yarn store called you and I which I will post a link to down below um, yeah I just really was excited about this yarn in particular and excited that I could get myself some so yeah a lot going on this month um, even though I was like, this is definitely going to be a shorter video. It is definitely not. Um, but I hope that you had fun hanging out with me, had your knitting, and uh, that we get to talk sooner rather than later. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It's a great way to support my channel. If you want to donate, donate a tip via Ko-Fi. Um, the link again is down below. And uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll, I'll, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Bye.